Hey everyone, Aaron Blaze here and welcome to another episode of Aaron's Art Tips. Number eight. Okay, so today I want to talk to you animators out there, um, and especially you young animators, uh, animators still in school, guys that are and gals that are still um, kind of learning the ropes and that sort of thing. I know at the uh, at the animation schools right now, especially in the first year classes, you're probably just getting ready to do some dialogue scenes, and um, and so I thought it might be a good time to talk about something animation specific today, and that is phrasing for animation and dialogue, but it also overlaps into something that um, I, I used to see a lot when I would review portfolios, and, um, and I'll explain what I mean. Um, I, I would always get portfolios, reels of animation, for, especially from younger animators, that um, their biggest problem that they always did was they over-animated the material in the scenes especially with dialogue. Um, it's our business as animators in creating the lives, the, 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 you know, when we breathe life into these characters, um, that's exactly what we're, do. we're trying, doing. We're trying to create life through animation. And it, so animation doesn't necessarily mean moving something around the screen. What it means is to bring something to life. And to bring something to, to life doesn't always mean to have it move a lot. And so as I said, the a big mistake that I see, especially in a lot of young animators, is they feel like they have to move a character all the time in order to make it look like they can really animate and it just really kills the animation. So I wanna to talk today about holding back. And um, especially if you have a dialogue scene, you can really use that dialogue to help you phrase out your posing, meaning, It'll, if you have phrases within the dialogue, usually you can have one, maybe two poses for each phrase, and then that's it. And then you can work in, inside these little, these little poses. And I've got one scene that I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to try to keep this short. Uh, from Mulan. Uh, it's a scene that I did years ago when we were making the film, obviously. And... Um, uh, it's short, and it has to do with Yao. Yao is one of the gang of three that Mulan uh, befriends when she joins the army, if you've seen the film. And um, there is a scene that uh, Shang, who is getting all of his new troops ready to start training, he lines everyone up, and he challenges Yao to climb this pole and retrieve this arrow that, that Shang has shot into the... Uh, into this big post. He has to, Yao has to climb this post. So I want to play the dialogue for you and I want you to listen to it and I'll point out where Yao's part is, the scene that I want to talk about. Um, and I happen to have the thumbnails for it that I did and so we'll, we'll just talk about the process. So right now I'm just going to play the scene and um, I'm going to play it on another screen so you can't see it and, uh, and let's just have a listen. You will assemble swiftly and silently every morning. Anyone who acts otherwise will answer to me. Ooh, tough guy. Yeah. Now that's Yao. That's not the scene yet. Thank you for here volunteering. Comes. Retrieve the arrow. Right here. I'll get that arrow, pretty boy. And I'll do it with my shirt on. There. One moment. So he walks off. I'll get that arrow, pretty boy, and I'll do it with my shirt on. That's the scene. That's the dialogue that I was given. And so I knew I wanted to keep it subtle because he had to... He was talking under his breath, and he didn't want to be caught. Uh, but Yao has this big kind of ego, big personality, wants to fight all the time. And so I started thinking about what I was going to do to animate this scene. So I started thumbnailing. So I'm going to go ahead and bring over some of these thumbnails. 
and here we go. I'm going to blow these up so you can see them. And I started thinking about, okay, I knew what had to happen in the scene. I knew that Yao had to bow, do this with his fist and bow, and then come up and start talking. So I thought, okay, well, what if he bows and he starts talking under his breath? I'll get that arrow, pretty boy. That's a pose. That's it. I'll get that arrow, pretty boy. And then the next phrase is, and I'll do it with my shirt on. So then he stands up and he's looking. I thought maybe he could be looking at the pole and, and just looking up there. And maybe he glances over at Shang. But that's really all I think it needed. Uh, and, it's, and that's how I would have done it. And looking up there. And the only thing I thought could be interesting is if he's preparing, he's rubbing his hands together. And I thought, okay, this could be kind of cool. That, that could be where the fun animation comes in for me as the animator. And just kind of rubbing his hands together, but really sticking in this pose where he says, I'll get that arrow, pretty boy, and I'll do it with my shirt on. And he just does that, and he walks off. And that's it. That's all I needed for that scene. And that's the point I'm trying to make. That Anyone else could have come along, or I could have come along, and really overanimated that and overthought it. But it really, all it needed was two main poses. And you can see here, he glances I'm going to blow this up some more. I had several ideas you can see here that I sketched out for Yao. Um, the port, part where he's bending over and bowing, I didn't, I didn't uh, do that part. But I do have the part where he's looking up. And it was a very simple pose. You can see here, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get that arrow, pretty boy. And then he stands up, pretty boy, over here. And, and I'll do it with my shirt and I'll do it with my shirt on and he hits an emphasis right there on on right there and then he just starts to walk off so I planned it out that way kept it very simple you can see it was just a you know a page of quick thumbnails quick scribbles of Yao but at least it gave me a, a point of reference a place to start and it kept me from over animating the scene because I knew that this is all I needed to do so let, I'm going to pull the scene over now, and I'm going to play it from the beginning. Let's make that full screen, and watch for that scene now, and you'll see what I'm talking about. You will assemble swiftly and silently every morning. Anyone who acts otherwise will answer to me. <laughs> Tough guy. Yo. Thank you for volunteering. Retrieve the arrow. I'll get that arrow, pretty boy. And I'll do it with my shirt on. And that was one it. Moment. That's all it needed. I'm going to play it one more time. Let's back it up a little bit. You can see I got some attitude in the bow, but it was just a quick bow. And the way I had him drop his hands and swing them gave some Good attitude. For volunteering. Retrieve the arrow. I'll get that arrow, pretty boy. And I'll do it with my shirt on. And that was it. That's all I felt that it needed. One Whoops. moment. Let me just stop that. There we go. Uh, and that's all I felt that it needed. And... And so did the directors, Tony Bancroft and Barry Cook. They approved it and they got into the movie. So, all this being said, next time you're animating a scene, um, really think about the actual acting and what needs to go into it as a living, breathing character. Don't think about how am I going to move this character around the, in, in the scene. Get inside your character's head. And then when you do, I guarantee that you'll find... Especially if you start acting it out yourself, you'll find that you really don't move around that much. Especially like when I talk, I, I use my hands a lot, but I'm really not, um, I, I don't jump all over the place. Okay? And, and, and observe people. Go out, um, you know, when you have conversations, when you go to parties, when you're at school, when wherever. Look at how people interact with each other and you'll be amazed. Really look at how they move and how they animate, especially if someone's telling, you know, ask someone how they had, you know, uh, uh, how their weekend was 
and get them to tell a story and then you'll get some animation but even within that animated storytelling you'll find that there's certain areas that we pick to move quite a bit but it's balanced by a lot of just held back posing and that is how you get life into your characters when you're animating it's not moving them around that's not the illusion of life the illusion of life is to create a character that is living and breathing and thinking and when you can do that that's when your characters will start jumping off the screen and coming to life okay so um so that was all for all you animators out there um next week uh we'll find something that's probably a little bit more universal to everybody else i hope everyone else though uh, got something out of this um so go back to your classes and spread the word play this video in your class talk to everybody and uh, and hopefully your tests will come out really good and uh i just want to remind everyone that you can see more of my work uh, on my website at creatureartteacher.com. Uh, that's Aaron, the, the, uh, the art of Aaron Blaze. And the URL is creatureartteacher.com. Also, I want to give a shout out to Wacom and all of their products. Once again, I, I try to do this every week. But, um, you know, go to Wacom's website. It's W-A-C-O-M, Wacom.com. Uh, they've got some great materials there, great uh, products. I use, when I do all my digital work, I use a 24-inch uh, uh, HD Cintiq. I draw right on the screen. It's fantastic. Uh, I can't recommend them enough. Also, uh, anybody out there, if you guys have any ideas for new material that you want to see me cover in the future, go down into the uh, comments down below here and give me some suggestions. I'd love to, to uh, you know, start catering to what you guys want and need. Um, we've got, I've got a lot more information to give and, and, uh, I plan on giving it for a lot long, a, a long while. So, um, thanks for watching. It's been great so far. Let's keep doing it and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you so much.